Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Star Trek Judgment Rights. When we last left off, we managed to solve the encounter on Balkos 3 and had previously been sent uh, to the Omega Corvus uh, region to examine radiation clouds. And boy, what a hoot that would have been! Unfortunately for us, Starfleet communicated with the Enterprise and uh, diverted us to the Delphi system, where we need to... Uh, Find out what happened to three Federation vessels that have disappeared there in recent uh, times. Without further ado, let's head over to the Delphi system. The Delphi system is uh, this one here, which uh, is beneath this uh, ellipses here. So, uh, or ellipse rather. Let's go! Captain, at our current speed of warp 7, I expect to enter the Delphi system in 8 minutes. That's not bad at all! Captain, I just started getting the oddest noise on all channels. It sounds like some sort of insect drone. That is an odd sound to hear in outer space. Let's hear it, Lieutenant. Is it an insect drone? No, it's not. It's gonna be one of those sort of days on the Enterprise, isn't it? An object is approaching the Enterprise. Onspot. Mr. Spock, is that what I think it is? It's definitely going to be one of those sort of days on the Enterprise, isn't it? Sensors indicate that it is an authentic Earth warplane, circa 1917, belonging to the nation of Germany. Its appearance is identical to a Fokker DR-1. Sensors also indicate an immense power source and one life form. That life form is currently surviving in outer space on a triplane. It's gonna be one pretty powerful life form. We are being healed. Let's find out who it is. This is Baron Trelane von Garthus of the German Air Circus. I have identified you as an enemy aircraft. You have ten seconds to surrender before I blow you out of the sky. Ah. It's Trelane, everyone! The person that the Enterprise never wanted to see again. Trelane was a antagonist of sorts in one of the episodes in the first series, The Squire of Gothos, where Trelane had basically styled himself as his own leader and had uh, basically prevented the uh, away team that landed on a mysterious planet that had appeared out of nowhere that Trelane had called Gothos. Uh, prevented them from leaving. Trelane was fascinated by war and conflict, and uh, pretty much was uh, considered a, um, actually was, a child of his species, and his parents at the end came over and uh, scolded him for uh, playing around with lesser species and uh, potentially harming them. Trelane has near godlike powers. This is bad, especially considering the fact that Trelane is out again and causing mischief. <laughs> William Campbell uh, played Trelane in the original uh, episode, Squire of Gothos, and William Campbell in fact reprised his role for the voice acting of Trelane in Judgment Rights. Sadly, William Campbell is no longer with us. Let's see what Trelane wants, apart from apparently to blow us out of the sky in his triplane. Trelane, but I thought we'd seen the last of you. That's a reasonable uh, thing to ask. Stop playing games, Trelane. Leave my ship alone. That's not gonna work, Kirk. You and I both know this. We surrender. That's also a terrible idea. Trelane, triplanes didn't have radios during the First World War. That is something we could actually uh, we could actually say, but I think winding him up is probably not a good idea. Trelane, but I thought we'd seen the last of you. Yeah, let's go with that. Captain Kirk, that is not the way for mortal enemies to greet each other on the field of battle. Of course you hadn't seen the last of me. I am Trelane, the humble Baron of Gothos. Well, at least he's uh, upgraded himself from the Squire of Gothos, eh? That's a bit of a step up. Also, I wouldn't really class you and Kirk as mortal enemies here. Humility is not something that I would associate with you, Trelane. That's true. I suppose we're going to get another tantrum from a runaway child with too much power for his own good. Let's not antagonize the near godlike entity, Kirk. Mortal enemies? When are you going to grow up, Trelane? Once again, let's not antagonize the near godlike, um, 
being, Kirk. Humility is not something that I would associate with you, Troy. That's a good option. Oh, this is wonderful. The sarcastic banter of determined foes just before a battle that only one of them will survive. Oh. It seems like uh, he is intent on killing us. Oh, joy. Put an end to this farce at once, Troy. That will probably start combat. You have a way of trying my patience, Troy. That will probably start combat. Go home, Trelane, before you get in trouble again. That will definitely start combat. Didn't your parents punish you enough, Trelane? I think all of these will start combat. Put an end to this farce at once, Trelane. I think we'll go with this option. If you insist. That's going to be combat. Sensors indicate he is closing on us. Let's see if that triplane is equipped with more than machine guns. Wanna know or something? It's most certainly armed with something more than, uh, than, um, machine guns. It's armed with phasers! Quite nasty phasers, too. We need to get as many shots in on this thing as we can. Win or lose, however, it doesn't make a difference, because we get to, uh, get to carry on regardless. Get to carry on regardless. Won't actually let us fire the, uh, Photon torpedoes right now because we won't even uh, we won't even get a chance to uh, do anything with them. We need to be a little careful though. We don't necessarily need to win this, as I said, but that triplane is very, very dangerous. It has some very nasty phases. We need to be very careful. Trelane is a very powerful being, and uh, nearly got Kirk killed actually in the. Uh, in the episode that he was in. So we need to watch out. We actually need to repair a little. Just a little. Let's let uh, Scotty do his thing. Oh, we're being fired on. A lot. We need it to be a lot faster than that. We need to go faster right now. We really need to go faster. We only have one phaser. That's bad. That's really bad. That's really bad. All of our weapons... Oh. Yep, we lost. We have been unconscious for a considerable length of time, Captain. This is Lieutenant Commander Ellis, First Officer and Security Chief of the USS Zimbabwe. Losing there is not the worst thing, because win or lose, you end up in the same location. But I'd have liked to have won that fight. Oh well. The triplane fight is actually very difficult. I mean, it's a very small target, unlike many of the other ships you encounter. Well... Let's see, uh, what uh, Commander Ellis has to say. Hello, Mr. Ellis. Where is your captain? Not here, is the obvious answer. He was in sickbay at the time that triplane attacked us. I don't know what's going on. Oh, Kirk does. What is going on, Commander, is a gentleman named Trelane. An immature child of a race with vast powers. Somehow he acquired an unhealthy fascination with human military history. Last time we encountered him, he had an interest in the Napoleonic era. It seems those interests have advanced forward in time. It would appear, Captain, that his awareness of human history has advanced to the level of your First World War. That is really bad if that is true. If it advances any further. Yeah, the, yeah, it gets only worse from there on out. Not only do we need to escape this place, but we need to find a way to discourage Trelane's interest in war once and for all. Yeah, that's going to be difficult. How did you escape from him last time, Captain? Well, that's a good question. His parents appeared and punished him. I doubt that we can rely on such an intervention a second time. Yeah, his parents appeared as sort of floating green orbs of light, if memory serves. So, we are now here. We have a red shirt, but he's technically not a red shirt. It's very high ranking. Lieutenant Commander Ellis is frowning. This sort of stuff always seems to happen to the Enterprise. Yes, it does. Dr. Leonard McCoy, who wonders what is really going on. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Mr. Spock finds this situation fascinating. That is not a surprise whatsoever. James T. Kirk, who wonders how he's going to defeat Trelane this time. Also, interesting thing, let's try talking to ourselves. Anyone have any ideas about how to get out of here? That's a good question. 
Let's talk to McCoy, because he's always positive in these situations. At least nobody's sick. That's a positive. Fascinating. This appears to be an Earth domicile, late 19th or early 20th century. Hmm. What do you have to say? Okay, take us out of here. We will. Let's have a look around, shall we? The only door in this room, it is locked. Hmm. There are many bundles of sticks piled against the wall. We could have some of those. There are many bundles of sticks piled against the wall. Just curious to see if the uh, piles of sticks on the floor were different. We need to save. Save new game. Seems like a good idea to save. What else have we got? A small barrel rests against the wall. It is empty. Well, that's not gonna help. Straw. Not the sort of bedding that Starfleet officers are used to. Rather damp, too. Hmm. A crate. It is labeled schnapps. It is nailed shut. That might be useful. Here is a bulb. A light bulb, triggered by a chain, is suspended above the center of the room. The chain is broken. Oh. Well, I suppose we could start scanning things, I guess. What do you have to say about this, Mr. Spock? It would appear to be an ordinary crate, Captain. Oh. Of course it's a crate. It looks like a crate, feels like a crate. What else could it be? Which Trelane? Who knows? Doctor, we are dealing with an entity who is capable of sustaining an artificial atmosphere on a planet and then flying that planet around the universe like a starship. That would be the planet Gothos that Spock is referring to. Spock's right, Bones. When we're dealing with Trelane, we need all the information that we can get. Something that looks trivial might be the key to defeating him and saving the Enterprise. Not just the Enterprise. And the Zimbabwe. Indeed. So, uh, let's have a... Let's have a look at this, shall we? What's in here? The crates are nailed shut. You are unable to open them. Hmm. Maybe we could get you to open them? No. Hmm. That is interesting. How are we going to open them? What about this crate here? A crate. It is labeled schnapps. It is unopened. Ah! Excellent. The crate is open. It is full of bottles of Himrick schnapps. The date on the bottle says 1913. Well, let's get some, I think. But first, let's scan them. Let's see what they are. Really? It would appear to be an ordinary crate, Captain. Oh. Well, it won't let us do that. We'll just get some, then. You have taken several bottles of schnapps. Indeed. We might need some of those. We might also need some of these sticks. You pick up a stick. Just one? You already have a stick. All right, we can't take two. Fair enough. We may need two, but no, we only need one. Let's have a look at the door. Is it just made of wood? There is nothing unusual about the door. I am conducting a sensor sweep of the area. We appear to be about 15 meters underground. There's a single human life force stationary, approximately six meters from the door, and about six life forms in our immediate vicinity on the surface. Oh, that's useful information to know. What about the light bulb, Spock? This light bulb is an anachronism. Although its light output is typical of period lighting sources, it is far more energy efficient and encased in shatterproof glass. Oh. Trelane was never very good at getting the fine details right. He wasn't. Uh, there were notes in the episode that he was in that while he could make human food, he never got the taste and smell right. And while the fire roared brightly, there was no heat. A correct observation, Doctor. Indeed. We need to get out of here. There are only a few ways that we can get out of here. One of them is, of course, by just phasering the door open, I'd wager. Save new game. Replace if, previous game. if we have our phasers, which we do, I don't want to use any of them, though. For a start, if uh, the people here believe that it's... Uh, World War One era, Earth, we really don't want to start firing phasers everywhere. However, we have hay here, and we have a stick, and we have something that will make hay burn. 
Let's start pouring this into the hay. You cover the straw with schnapps. And then, let us start a fire. By the way, if nobody comes to actually rescue us, this is going to be one of the easiest ways to die horribly. What's going on here? Well, we just started a fire. What do you think's going on here? We should leave this building immediately. The proximity of this fire to a large concentration of alcohol puts us at considerable risk. Thanks, Buck. I didn't know that before. I, mean, I think we need to talk to the guard here. Let's look at him. This guard looks like he wants you to give him an excuse to shoot. Ah, let's not give him an excuse to shoot. There are two ways we can. Oh. Do you think the Baron cares if you burn to death? Yes. Who is this Baron? Trelane? We need to get out of here. Don't be a fool, man. If you keep us in here, you'll die too. Yep. It depends on whether he likes his prisoners rare, medium, or well done. Who is this Baron? Trelane? We need to get out of here. Don't be a fool, man. If you keep us in here, you'll die too. Yep. You have a point, Kirk. Go. I will be following. Let's go. Our soldier friend seems to have gotten separated from us. I heard some windows breaking on the other side of the building. I assume that was him. Indeed, that most likely was him. But yes, we could have just used Spock on him. But if we'd have used Spock on him, he'd have died. The building is structurally sound, Captain. I doubt that it would collapse, but as a precaution, I would not enter it again. I think that's a sensible idea. Well, where are we, Mr. Spock? Well, we're currently on a city street. Isn't it obvious? In trouble. Thanks, Alice. That was really helpful. Do you have a problem, Mr. Alice? It would seem like he does. Yes, sir. I have a problem. His name was... The Baron does not appreciate vagrants. Was uncalled for. He was just standing there. Why that? That was very mean. This unfortunate soul is screaming for help. Hmm. This looks like a man who enjoys his work. Well, we know what to do with you. Punch you in the face! Let's deal with things the Kirk way! Having fun, Jim? Well, we most certainly needed to do that. Poor man. The old man is groaning in pain. The bullying soldier beat him badly. That is no good. We most certainly need to, uh... Get, um... We need to get, uh... McCoy on him. A human, approximately 60 years of age, in poor physical condition. His hip is broken, Jim. He needs our help. He does. Let us, uh, use the med kit on him. Everything's in working order, Jim. No, no, no. Let's use the med kit on him. There we go. This should help. You poor soul. Don't worry, we'll fix you up right as rain. That should fix the hip problem. He should rest. Thank goodness Trelane didn't take the tranquilizers from my med kit. He'd probably be too tired to talk much. Hmm. We need to talk to him, I think. We also need to have a look around. A quaint village shop. Typical of early 20th century Earth. Hmm. A burnt out hovel. This is where Trelane placed you after you were taken from the Enterprise. Indeed. A quaint little pub. Reminiscent of 19th century German pubs. Also, notice that somebody came out to have a look when we punched the guard. This seems pointless. Apparently this seems pointless, though. We can't target her. Let's have a look at our various crew members. Lieutenant Commander Ellis glares at Kirk. Oh. I'm detecting some, uh, dislike here. Mr. Spock, pondering the illogic of this situation. Oh, if you're going to start doing that, Spock, we're going to be here all day. Dr. McCoy. Pondering the unusual nature of this situation. That's a little more sensible. The bullying soldier might be surprised to have met his match if he were still conscious. Oh, he most certainly is not conscious. Most certainly not. Smoke billows out of the abandoned hovel. Well, it's a good thing we're not in there. Let's talk to all of our crew members first. I didn't join Starfleet to play at being a galactic tourist. Well, you're on the Enterprise, McCoy. You never know what's going to happen. This strikes me as something of a Potemkin village, Captain. It lacks the scope to be truly real. A creation of Trelane's, no doubt. 
One of his imitations of reality. Indeed. Undoubtedly, Captain, there is a high probability that it will be an extremely deadly place. Yes, do not let appearances fool you here. This place is deadly. Let's talk to Ellis. All right, Commander, you are about to tell us why you're being so hostile. Let's hear your story. Let's hear it. Does the name Lieutenant Ralph Garvin sound familiar to you? He was my roommate at the Academy and was killed by some blood-sucking cloud while on a landing party under your command. Oh! Oh uh, dear, it would seem like uh, one of the many uh, red shirts that perish under Kurt's command is um, a friend of uh, Ellis here. Space is not the safest of environments. I've always done my best to protect my crew, and I've always honored anyone who has lost their life under my command. Indeed. Probably not on screen, though, because he tends not to. He goes through red shirts quite a bit. The Enterprise is routinely assigned to unknown and extremely dangerous sectors. Also true. I have always made it a policy to lead landing parties and share the risk with my men. That's true. I suppose you've never lost someone under your command, Commander. You've never felt the loss of a subordinate while you've been on a landing party? Mm, not a great option there. When you become a captain of a starship, you have every right to judge me. We're in the middle of a life and death situation. I expect you to act like a Starfleet officer. That's argumentative. I have always made it a policy to lead landing parties and share the risk with my men. That is true. We'll go with that. Captain, if I see you do anything that puts us or our escape at risk, you'll regret it. That is really confrontational. I'm not interested in vendettas. I'm interested in survival. If you have a problem with me, you can wait until everyone's safe. Is that clear, Commander? That's pretty blunt. Yes, sir. It's not clear at all. He's most certainly going to carry that on. But Save that's for next time. But when we come back, folks, we shall talk to this man that we saved from this village that shouldn't be here in a time period that was long ago, because Trelane. Oh, Trelane. We're gonna have to deal with you, aren't we? I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later. <laughs>